I know. Well, now it's recording, but <laughs> I was gonna say, hopefully more often. Um, yeah, yeah. But okay, yeah, I miss talking to you. Me too. I miss the podcast, but we're here and we're doing it. Um, what color is a Himalayan poppy flower? Hmm. Okay. So the only thing that's called Himalayan, right, of anything that yeah. I'm aware of, is Himalayan sea salt, which is pink. Yes. So I'm going to go pink. It's blue. It's blue. Ooh, yeah. Oof, but was... solid effort. Solid. Good yeah. logic. Um, that was terrible logic. As... I, was, <laughs> I was saying the color of salt. <laughs> I'll know it has to Assuming do Assuming everything there is pink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're back at the Cars Cast. Okay. I, I just want to mention the headphones that you're wearing. I know. Listen, I didn't want to wear these, but they. I, I'm clearly at home. I'm not in Chicago. And I didn't forgot to bring my my usual headphones that I wear. But I will say these, because I usually don't like wearing over ear headphones for the reason you're what you're doing right now is you have one ear out so that you can hear yourself talking. But yeah. these have that like pass through, the transparency, the transparency that actually makes it completely okay, which is kind of insane. Yeah. But and also I probably sound great with the sound you, quality of those things. Oh yeah. It's crisp. I mean, th- these things only cost like 60 bucks. Like these right. sound like garbage. You honestly sound like uh Groucho Marx or something in a <laughs> in a talkie. <laughs> I will say yeah, I got these as a um a Christmas gift. Um I don't think I would ever pay for these myself cuz and also I never mentioned for people audio listening that I'm wearing the AirPod Maxes uh which yeah i i mean they're they're nice they're really nice don't get me wrong um but they are in like stupid expensive named after uh the streaming service max right (laughs) yeah okay that well there's so much to talk about as far as i was gonna say i'm like we could riff on the vr headset that is way old news could riff on the submarine uh okay the vr headset just real quick like one sentence no yeah that seems like it'd be really interesting to watch films on. Yeah. I, I, I'm i telling you, the people have been waiting for our take on that VR headset. <laughs> That's what we're known for. Yeah. We're tech guys. Our tech takes. No. Yeah, look at this. I got a, I have a, a mouse now that's like a fancy. Oh my god! The, the MX3 we're, for we're matching for, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yours is different. My, yours though. is like the insane trackpad version. Mine's yeah. just like the normal person version. Not saying you're Hell abnormal, yeah. but your right. your mouse movement style, right, is right. abnormal. Yep, yep. But I like this because I do a lot of editing now for my job. Yeah, so this is the side scroll. Yep. Do yep. I have this all mapped out for Premiere? So the side scroll is zoom in and out of the timeline. Dude. And then I have, and then I have the uh, these buttons are like jump forward and back on a clip on whatever is your active track. That's nice because I will say that I wish I had that because the one thing this doesn't really do great at is like zooming in and out and like side scrolling it's like yeah. i, I kind of like go to my trackpad for that but that's very convenient um it is speaking of logitech same oh, i also uh, got a new chair oh yeah, cool. yeah what's I the mean, chair what's the chair it's, it's a steel case series one nice so nice. it's like the, the like lowest level steel case but right. it's still much more comfortable than my old chair right right right, right. and i also had an armrest that actually adjusts so that my uh shoulder isn't nice and feeling like it's being torn off while i'm editing yeah yeah i mean you i feel like you edit more than i do these days now i probably <laughs> do because uh jared uh, so for people who are not aware i now live in milwaukee right uh because it's been a while i figure we'll just do the whole update please and i work with my brother jared who's you know a friend of the podcast yep yep and i do a lot of editing of his youtube channel yeah. formula bone it's an f1 channel which yep. i only know like a bit about yeah. but yeah i don't i don't write this stuff so it doesn't right. matter, it doesn't I, just, matter. I just edit him he sits in a race car bed right. i film him edit him You're... churn out the tiktoks are you learning a lot in the process about f1 um yeah for sure yeah. i'm learning about f1 that's yeah. the only thing i'm learning about yeah <laughs> i i know this is different 
but I only just checked in with NASCAR because, which I know it, because of the Chicago thing. They like came to right. Chicago, which was a whole. I'm really glad I was in the city, uh, but I like saw clips of it online, and it really does make F1 look so much more exciting because NASCAR just looks kind of boring, to be honest. Yeah, and F1 it's like well, cool. It's like okay, weird cars and yeah. So. NASCAR, that was the first time they ever had done, like, a street circuit. Yeah. Every other time, they just go in an oval. Right, right. So that They only turn left. I saw a bunch of crashes. Like, that's not what... Like, they're not yeah. built to do well, they're, these turns. They're, not, they're probably not used to turning right, ever. Yeah. They never turn right. <laughs> the, the wheels aren't built to go that way. Like, I, they probably just have, like, their left arm, like, super jacked from, like, pulling down. <laughs> yeah. It's like how you, you ever seen like a male gymnast and it's like their top part is like they're just really buff and then they have like yeah. the tiniest legs <laughs> it's like nascar they just have a giant left arm yep um or rafael nadal the tennis player yeah yeah his, his i guess he's right-handed but his one his like dominant arm is like so much bigger than his other arm that's crazy yeah he just does right arm day yeah that's how you're gonna get with all your mouth or editing with your yeah you know the muscles yeah, my uh, well actually i'm probably just gonna get carpal tunnel syndrome <laughs> <laughs> like yeah my arm's gonna be so jacked and i just my wrist is just like yeah. all the time you're gonna get one of those mouse pads that has like the yeah i I'm tried not... one of those i hated it yeah no they're not that great um mine just gets dirty because i never wash my hands famously so <laughs> <laughs> i know i was wondering where you were going with that you're like yeah my mouse pad just gets so it just gets dirty fucking filthy just <laughs> yeah yeah oh okay. this is something i was all the topics i've brought up so far are completely irrelevant at this point in time but the what is relevant is threads uh, threads we could yeah, talk we about both threads. Just joined. <laughs> yeah like yeah. so out and i had no idea this was happening and then like i saw one notification about it and downloaded the like they got me so easily on it it's kind yeah, of embarrassing I, I still don't understand it yeah i mean like, it's just I tried to, twitter first it's of all there's twitter. no dark mode is there is it all is yours all light yeah wait Mine's is yours dark? only dark yeah i didn't know there was a oh, light wait mode. oh it must be like a <laughs> uh like a some kind of preference thing in some other settings i couldn't even find out yeah. how to change it to dark mode is your instagram in dark mode or is it is that in no the, it's not that's so probably they just, just transferred oh. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah damn i forgot they had instagram in light mode i'm a dark mode everywhere kind of guy yeah i'm dark mode in most places i've been yeah. slowly converting it's nice on the eyes um can you imagine like, like premiere on light mode that'd be insane yeah like i think you can change the background really oh. yeah so i think you could do it damn um but that would be awful though like your eyes would just be <laughs> just destroyed yeah <laughs> um yeah i mean do you feel like you're gonna use threads pretty like Here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what, tell me the thing. Tell well, me the thing. I was going to say, I have been off Twitter for a week now because I'm at home and I'm, like, kind of on vacation. And uh, not really. I'm still working. But I, like, just decided to get off Twitter and then, like, this came around. And I've been using it pretty consistently. And it does feel, like, cleaner. But also, like, the the it's not as, like, funny. Like, I feel like Twitter stuff is, like, funnier Yeah. in the... No, it does feel like this weird sanitized. That's yeah. Space. That's the yeah sanitized. It's a little. It's not there yeah. yet, but I kind of. The like thing is, it. you can leverage the fact that you have a crap ton of Instagram followers. That right. Will, so I it's mean, like you have a built-in base that's gonna be yeah when they join. I think I literally have like f half the followers on Instagram that I do on Twitter. It sucks because I was just starting to like. I was almost gonna hit fifty k on Twitter. And I, for some reason, I really do see Twitter, like, going down. Like, yeah. I see it as a downhill slope right now. And Yeah, I didn't realize you had 50K on Twitter. I don't. That I almost have 50. I have, like, 45. Hey, anyone listening who doesn't follow Carson, <laughs> follow that guy. I tried to, like, get it a boost by doing this series on my channel where I, like, have people send me their unpopular opinions on Twitter and then I do a video on it. And the video did yeah. all right, so I don't really think it, like took off the way i wanted it to and i didn't really get that many followers from it so anyway yeah my uh i did have my most successful ever tweet on the topic of twitter oh uh, yeah 
it like in it was in May because I only, that was my second most recent tweet besides the one yeah. that I retweet of Jared's stuff. Right. Uh, it was my Letterboxd BlackBerry review. I just put it on Twitter and <laughs> yeah. it did even better than Letterboxd. Wait, did it? I need to see, wait. I didn't because I saw I was gonna bring it up because it blew up on Letterboxd. But yeah. I bet Matt Johnson has seen that review. Like I'm, which is so funny, but sure, it's probably the most seen review of that film in the world. I think it is. It sucks because he did a video for Letterbox where he like read reviews of the film, but I think that came out before you made that review. But he absolutely would have talked about it. Yeah, it's such a funny review. <laughs> it's like, and it's it's a hundred percent true. I want to be very clear about this. That is what my mom said to me right after we walked out of the theater. Because I saw it with my parents on my birthday. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to repeat the review for anyone that doesn't, or I, yeah, for anyone that hasn't seen it yet? Yeah. So my review of the film Blackberry uh-huh. was, and this did happen. My mom said this was the saddest movie she has ever seen because she had a Blackberry that she liked in 2006. I know for a fact she has seen Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great review. Um. I like yeah, the so on, uh, no period. Did, oh, actually, it's yeah, yeah. No period. No period at no the period. end because that would be too strong. No. Too no. That's like it makes it feel like you're trying. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, Carson, you are well, yeah. much better than me. We all you know, know yeah. that you want thing. You try really hard to make it look like you're not trying. Exactly, and that is that is like half of your brand, <laughs> and you're amazing at it. Uh, you're like a virtuoso. It's you know, I'm I'm trying so hard. Is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it looks I'm like thinking about trying. periods yeah um no it's like then you like oh should i make this all lowercase <laughs> to make it look like i but the thing is everyone knows at this point that yeah. it's harder to make things lowercase because it auto capitalizes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then you have to like manually make it lowercase yeah yeah now everyone's anyways, caught on to the did, lowercase uh, thing yeah, yeah. 4656 on letterbox and it's at like 4400 on twitter it's crazy it was like one of them it was like one of the big reviews of that week on letterbox <laughs> is that a thing is there a chart of the biggest I th- reviews well it says it week? always says like popular with friends at the home page when you go on like desktop and yeah i've never been on letterbox on desktop <laughs> yeah that's yeah you know what that's and that's fair um but i like looked at because you can see like friends who who liked the review and like a bunch of a few like big youtubers that i know and like some critics i know liked it and it's just so oh really like everyone saw this review it's so funny (laughs) um but yeah anyway that's i finally left my mark on the letterbox community (laughs) Yeah, it's the ideal review, really. I have that review, and I have the most uh, commented on review. Yeah. I think my favorite review of yours is, um, what is it, like, Garfield Hates Mondays or something for, like, oh, yeah. Tick, Tick, Tick Boom? For, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's so that stupid. so funny. <laughs> um, anyway, that's, uh, I guess, all I have to catch up with. Yeah. There's so also, much more, uh, but... Yeah, last thing, then we'll get to the film. Also, Jared is probably going to drop me food where I'm going to run away for a minute. Right, but, right. Um, TIFF. TIFF, Toronto the, uh, International Film Festival. Yeah, which we, we attended last year. Yes, famously. Uh, famously. Recorded we, on we the ground. We about it. <laughs> yep, or on the ground in a hostel where people just walk in and out. <laughs> the funniest uh, way we could have done that yeah i love like we didn't even have a table just tiff like checking our coverage and we send in that and they're like all right i guess it counts i guess they yeah, covered it <laughs> they sent the confirmation that we got accepted again they they want us back yeah yeah and uh you you may be going with uh pod fave cookie cookie yeah yeah, yeah. so so it might be it's more happening. karsten cookie coverage and like, right. a little bit of karsten jeff cookie absolutely oh absolutely there's a lot it's gonna be which people love cookie like they're probably the like number one podcast guest i know they they are the most requested to have back on and it's funny that jared's the least requested (laughs) truly people do not ask for jared back which is so funny no they they actually say keep jared away. yeah get him out of here i enjoyed having jared on the pod yeah, uh, it's it's um, always a okay. Blast. Jared just got here, so I'm gonna run down and then we'll get to the movie. Do your thing. I'll Do be right back. Thing. Sorry, I will talk while he's gone about 
Um, well, I actually won't talk about the movie just yet. I'll actually talk about something that Jeff has not seen. At, at least I don't think he's seen it, but that I want to get some thoughts out on. I did just watch The Idol, um, and I hated it. It was really bad. Uh, it's it's that new weekend show. I've already done a video about it, so you may have already seen what it is I'm talking about. Uh, but it's pretty bad, and it's a waste of time, and if you were considering watching it, uh, don't. But on another note, I also just watched uh, the new Indiana Jones movie. And I don't want to get too into it because I don't know if we'll end up doing an episode about it. It'd be kind of a good movie to do an episode about, to be honest. But I thought it was fine. I didn't. I really didn't like it for most of the movie. I could not get into it because I thought Harrison Ford looked way too old. And then the final 30 minutes were incredible and like so over the top and stupid and kind of exact like subverted my expectations not what i expected because for a second there was like a scene where mad nicholson the the bad guy like picks up the thing and like i'm like we've seen this before where the it's like they do it in every indiana jones movie where they put together the, the bad guy gets the object and then they die in some horrific way and i was like well here it comes and then it went a very different direction um, that I will not spoil, but that I thought was pretty incredible. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I would recommend seeing this movie because a good chunk of it was pretty dull and a little, yeah, just like underwhelming for an Indiana Jones movie. Cause like even Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I can find some, some good stuff with, uh, like it's still like a good fun and it's like pretty innocent at the end of the day, but like Dial of Destiny a good chunk of it is really dull and, and visually uninteresting, which was surprising because I like James Mangold. Um, I didn't love Ford v. Ferrari, but I've been meaning to rewatch that. Maybe we'd re we should uh, rewatch that for the podcast. I think that'd actually be kind of a good... Have we not talked about it on the podcast? I might pitch that. I might pitch Ford v. Ferrari. But anyway, um, Jeff is still gone, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ramble a little bit more. <laughs> Uh, what else have I been watching? I, I've been kind of in and out with the bear, but I, I've seen you guys' comments, and I'm going to finish the bear. And also, speaking of things that I'm going to finish, I am finishing up that Succession video. I don't know if it'll be out by the time this podcast is out, but it's a lot of work. It's like 40 minutes long, um, which is definitely my longest video, but it, it, take, it just honestly takes a lot of work getting all the footage. That's the most annoying part. People ask me all the time how I get my footage for my videos, and the answer is screen recording, which means I have to sit through, like, the entire show again, basically, which is not a bad thing because I love the show, but it, it just takes a lot of time to get all the footage for my my stuff. Um, which, speaking of, again with The Idol, uh, that was a disaster with <laughs> editing and putting it together because it kept getting age-restricted because there's just a lot of sex and nudity in it. Eat and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was a disaster. But Jeff is coming back. And we are back. I'm back. I managed I will I'm going to pat myself on the back. I was able to ramble that entire time and it was way more than I thought it would it was going to be. So. Yeah, I, yeah, Jared started talking to me. I'm like, Jared. <laughs> Jared, get the hell out of here. <laughs> no, I, I I live uh whenever you come visit me, which you're free to anytime. I will. Um, I mean, with with a little bit of notice, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, so tomorrow I'm driving back to Chicago, so maybe I'll just take the long way and and stop in. <laughs> I mean, you are absolutely welcome. Just to crash the place because <laughs> it's the most convenient time to go in, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to, let me know. We could. I might for a min. We could. Uh, you know, I have a projector if you want to watch anything. I might hit you. Well, also, we might be playing golf this weekend yeah i'm really to be honest i'm really yeah. excited about because yeah it's start, it's coming together i think saturday like morning ish yeah let me know Might. so that yeah, i can I get a down. tea time but yeah do that actually yeah. you want to play nine holes <laughs> i think we should just do nine yeah, yeah 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 that works uh how about saturday at like any time after like 10 so i just don't have to wake up super yeah yeah, yeah. Early I have no to drive. yep yep that's perfect saturday i'm like yeah, pretty like, free so like yeah, like ten thirty ish probably would be perfect. Okay, that's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty early, but I can do that. Oh, oh, if you want to do later, I I'll, I just didn't know. I'll 
Let me see. I mean, if we're only doing nine, how we could even do like eleven thirty. Right. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Whatever you're feeling. Yeah. Anyways, anyway. okay. Before we get into the movie, I have actually okay. One really funny thing, like please, please. two weeks ago. Yeah. I finally learned about Timu. What's that? Timu is this really weird Chinese site that's like Wish, but you actually receive the items. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, this is weird. I'm kind of just out of curiosity. I bought $4.50 worth of things that they shipped to me from China. Oh, is and it I here? just received it. I just received Can we... it unbox you wanna, this yeah I, so because you had to buy three items for get like they have all these fake deals and stuff right, but right so i bought three items that were all like a dollar something each and i'm gonna unbox them for you That's and they're weird. like the most random things <laughs> where it doesn't it doesn't make sense the yeah amount of money they can charge yeah here look i got this package wow uh yeah, I'll make sure that my address wasn't visible. I was going to say, <laughs> that's the only thing. I'll blur it out. I'm editing it. I'll yeah, yeah. It. Okay. This is really packaged well. All right. Smells interesting. <laughs> Came a long way. Right. Yeah, it did. Okay, here we go. We got, we got this. This is a, uh, can you guess what this is? Is that a cheese grater? No. It's, it's a, a garlic smasher. Okay. That's actually kind of uh, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that could be decent quality. It's yeah. One dollar. Wow. Including shipping. The shipping's free. I don't know how they make money. That's crazy. Okay. This, because I've always been curious. Uh, this is the random crap that you're supposed to <laughs> rub in your car to get all the dirt out. Super clean Super Europe. Super clean I don't Europe. think it's. Yeah. And then it's clearly in Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, not as useful yeah. i'll be honest hey it's only it was one dollar yeah yeah uh and then here we go the star of the show potentially uh this is a silicone pot strainer you're supposed to put it on your pot and then dump <laughs> the water out <laughs> when you make like pasta wow okay again one dollar that's it. It even has like clips. That's pretty good, actually. That that's not that bad. For a dollar. I mean, as long as yeah. it doesn't poison me. That is the star of the show. I feel like that would be yeah. the most handy, dude. Yeah, I might try it later. Not. But how do you spell? I'm always it? like, hey, Timu. T T E M U U. I said U. <laughs> T E M U. Timu. Timu. Wow. Dude. It's it's an insane website. This is not a sponsor, by the way. We're just kind of. I'm just absolutely not a sponsor. <laughs> I honestly do not vouch for the quality of anything on Timu. <laughs> I was just really curious, and I'm like, okay, I could spend four dollars, including shipping, to see what's up. I'm looking at the smart home section. Oh, I oh bet there's some God. really interesting items. I can get a thirty-one dollar watch. I would not pay for that watch. Oh my God, this is insane. This is yes. like kind of insane. <laughs> yes, I don't <laughs> up to ninety percent off. I wonder what yeah. is like the craziest thing you could get for like the cheapest price here. Like, yeah, I want I'm musical sure. instruments. Wow, could, oh my god, this <laughs> is so funny. <laughs> All right, cool. Shout out to okay, Timu. Yeah, sorry for that aside. No, I'm like fascinated now. I'm mm -hmm. just like looking at all of these items that do not look good. But you, it's I mean, so you, weird. so you picked those out. You just thought, yeah, yeah I picked them out because yeah. I, I, I thought it was like a random three. box. Yeah. Okay. No, they wanted you to buy three um, nice. for it to be like that price. So I'm like, okay, wow. I'm going to buy the three cheapest things that feasibly I could use. Yeah. That's a, that's a good idea. Jesus Christ. These are some $4 AirPods. I should buy them just to see. Yeah. The sound the, quality. What the sound quality is like. Dude, that's like you could do that with film products. You just buy like film, right. you know, products off Timu, and that could be a hit. I tried. I could thing. like try to make a movie strictly with things I bought off Timu. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that the would be movie. killer. <laughs> it would be like a like. There's so many YouTube possibilities because people do this. Yeah, yeah, where, that's insane. Um, you know, yeah. All right. Well. That's that. Uh, speaking of... So now let's talk about something very similar. Yeah, speaking of movies. Um, speaking of... Yeah, speaking of 
um, uh, speaking of Asteroid City, yeah, Asteroid City. This is uh, we're talking about Asteroid City today, the new Wes Anderson movie. We all love Wes Anderson here, don't we? Um, kind of we a sure do. kind of a fan favorite. Uh, and this is his yep. new. Holy shit! <laughs> I, this movie is fascinating. First, right off the bat, because it, I cannot get a an idea of how the world feels about it. Because, like, on Twitter and, like, in, like, film circles, people think it's, like, amazing. And they think it's, like, one of his best. And on Letterboxd, like, a lot of people love it. Can it was, like, lukewarm when it premiered there. And people were like, it's all right. And now that I'm looking at, like, audience reviews on Google, people hate this movie. <laughs> it's got an yeah, well, average of 2.0. I, I have a feeling yeah, that a lot of people who don't, aren't familiar with Wes Anderson right saw like someone in the cast like they saw Tom Hanks they're like oh I'm gonna go see the new Tom Hanks movie yeah yeah and then we're severely disappointed absolutely I mean that's that would make sense I also don't think it is like that accessible of a movie compared to some of his others like Grand Budapest mm-hmm. Hotel I'm like I find that one hard not to at least enjoy a li- like have a little fun with and this yeah. one I'm like it gets to a point where I'm like, this is, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> um, yeah. it, it almost feels like a film where you need to have watched his previous films, even though that's the, the stories thing. have nothing to do with each other. It's like, yeah. Oh, I'm looking out for these crazy, like hand painted backgrounds right. in a flat space shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I won't linger on that for t- point is I really like the reviews for this are all over the place. Um, because it's either like diehard Wes Anderson fans who think it's like the best thing ever or people that don't know who he is who think it's just horrible. <laughs> I saw a yep. TikTok of like some guy who was like had just watched it and he was like, "What have movies become?" and I'm like, <laughs> "This is just a kind of a most movies aren't like this. Like, I don't know what you were expecting." Um anyway, the synopsis reads Uh, World-changing events spectacularly disrupt the itinerary of a junior stargazer space cadet convention in an American desert town circa 1955. Um, It stars Jason Schwartzman, Scarlett Johansson, uh, Tom Hanks. It says Margot Robbie, but not really. Um, Yeah. And uh, Wait, wait. Can you say that again, that synopsis? (laughs) Uh, world-changing events spectacularly disrupt the itinerary of a junior stargazer slash space cadet convention in an American yeah, desert town. Not what the film's about, though. No, it's not. Well, in there, because the film in the film, it's about a play that's about that. Right. Exactly. Okay. So here's a here's another. This is the IMDb synopsis. That was the Google. Following a writer on his world-famous fictional play about a grieving father who travels with his tech-obsessed family to, sm- to small rural asteroid city to compete in a junior stargazing event, only to have his worldview disrupted forever. That makes a little yeah, bit more sense. That's better. I think they should just, like, start... I mean, it's how the movie starts, like, right off the bat. Like, this is a play, and I feel like that's how the synopsis should start. <laughs> or else people are going to be uh, confused. Um... But yeah, this is pretty it's it's his best performing movie so far. I mean, I don't know, it had his best opening of any movies ever made, which was cool. I think which just Which is also promising for the concept of movie theaters. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird cuz like that's good, but then something like Indiana Jones like bombed. And I just I mean, I just saw I haven't seen Indiana Jones yet. I was gonna say we could maybe talk about it. On, it, it was I was rambling about it I while you were down. gone, but it's a good. I would totally be down. It would be a phenomenal podcast movie because <laughs> I was gonna rewatch the other Indiana Jones films uh-huh. before. See, w- never mind. Well, this is that would be for the Indiana Jones review of what I was about to talk about. But um, Asteroid City. Uh, now this is similar though. It, I kind of watched a few Wes Anderson movies. Not a few. I only watched one before this <laughs> which one uh royal tenenbaums which oh that does actually feel like the most similar yeah I feel like yeah well i kind of like here's the thing about wes anderson i've really liked his recent stuff i mean i don't even i don't think isle of dogs is that great but i still enjoyed it and i thought it was i mean like if you like him it's hard not to like 
any movie he makes because it's just always going to have his style and that's enough yeah. for me uh which is why i also really like the french dispatch uh because it just felt like only that and but that's the thing is like people think he's gone like further down this rabbit hole and further into this like hyper stylized like dollhouse approach that he's completely lost touch with reality <laughs> Which is a fair critique when you look at, like, Isle of Dogs and French Dispatch. They feel like his least personal movies, and they just feel like kind of art pieces. And I feel like Asteroid City is, like, him kind of coming back down a little bit and Mm -hmm. kind of looking at his own work. And I thought it was really interesting. I mean, that's the thing is, like, I don't know if I get 100% of this movie (laughs) I'll yeah, admit. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not... I, I was hoping I would get to see it again before this, but uh, I've just been... I decided to see Indiana Jones instead. But I really want to see it again uh, because I feel like, similar to most of his movies, really, like, I, I would pick up on so much the second time because they're just... This is moving so fast and there's a lot going on. But, I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I am a little bit conflicted with a few parts of this. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, this is one of his uh, movies recently where he has this gigantic cast list where everyone says yes whenever he asks anyone (laughs) to be in his film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But unlike, you know, French Dispatch, for example, where it's like these vignettes, Mm -hmm. this is a whole film with all these people in it. Right, right. And I feel like at a certain point, you're putting too many people in the film. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it doesn't give enough screen time to, like, you know, some of the main characters because you have to, like, give cameos to, like, 35 different people. Right. There are, like, that's, like, a it's a, it's a good and a bad thing at the same time because I like the fact that he builds this whole, like, community and world with, like, tiny little subplots. Like, everything going on with, like, the kids and whatever, like, weird romance Maya Hawk had with that guy and, like also steve carell and whatever he i'm like yeah really like the movie's about jason schwartzman and his kid it feels like and um yeah there's just there's a lot going on (laughs) yeah i like Uh, the film i feel like this film could have been longer to flesh out a couple mm -hmm. of these different concepts a little bit more right yeah i actually do think I, i yeah i agree i think it could have been a little bit either longer or like you said as much as I like the community aspect of it and how lived in it feels, like I don't think the movie would hurt to like cut a few of these characters out. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Yeah. What What do you think of Steve Carell? I liked him. I couldn't stop because I I'm, I don't know if you know, but I'll say it in case any, someone doesn't know. That was originally Bill Murray. I thought Bill Murray was Tom Hanks's character, but. Apparently, he was supposed to play Steve Carell's character. And for, I think, COVID reasons, not the other reasons that people mm-hmm. assumed with Bill Murray, but, like, COVID reasons, he couldn't do it. And so they, like, flew in Steve Carell. And I thought, I mean, Steve Carell was great. <laughs> I thought he was really great. He was, like, I, I saw a review that I thought was interesting that he was, like, the only character that smiled in this movie. Like, no one was smiling the entire time. <laughs> except steve carell and i was like that's an interesting observation and that's yeah because he got on the project late so he didn't get the memo (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) there was a terrible thing that happened the day before he showed up on set so no one was no i don't know i (laughs) um what did uh i i wanted to ask you about the animation of the alien yeah yeah because it totally Obviously, it's very Wes Anderson, but it felt so much like uh, the Life Aquatic animation. Yeah, yeah. It's like this weird fake claymation style. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's like that's when he's like at his best, when he like blends the styles in my like, like in Life Aquatic. It's like, yeah, it's these this. I don't know. It's this insane concept to me where, you know, generally films with special effects, you're trying to blend these fake elements into reality yeah but yeah. wes anderson is just like nah like i'm gonna make it so overtly fake <laughs> yeah, but yeah. also have the people in the film pretend it's real right but it's like it, it's like insane i know that that like really i think that threw me off the most because 
there was it's been it was like a mysterious thing like they don't show the alien in any trailers and they're they're very mysterious yeah. about it so when it first showed up and the leg came out and it was so obviously like just this fake looking leg yeah. it was just hilarious to me but it like worked because that's the whole thing is it's all like yeah that's the whole thing is it's fake. like on the borderline of reality right yeah where you, wes anderson's the only person to get away with that because the whole film is so stylized you're just like this right isn't, you know i don't know it's like you're pretending it's real but like you you're not i don't know it's so I, it's hard to explain what's happening here yeah i also love because yeah the alien is like so clearly like this thin non-human thing like that it's just obviously like Which a little many clay. people have have said that about me <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it just like it looks like not a real like it's not, not someone in a suit but then like later in the movie when they show like jeff goldblum hanging out yeah. in the alien suit it just i just thought that was so funny um yeah i i while we're on that alien i thought that was like the best scene ever <laughs> that made me laugh so hard um it was just like perfect timing and humor and like came at the exact right moment and just yeah it's like one of my favorite things he's done it was so good yeah, and it, there's also that moment within the scene where i feel like i'm a big fan of these very specific moments that wes mm -hmm. anderson has where yeah. um like in this one it was like when he took the photo yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's so i don't know he's just got this, like, I don't know, like, somehow the timing of it like the rhythm yeah of it is so good it's like the perfect thing that he needed to do in that moment. I don't know. It just, like, this reminded me how... I mean, I thought this during French Dispatch, too. Like, I think he's just a hilarious guy. Like, his movies are so funny to me. Because it's, like, shit like that where it's, like, that's not technically funny, but just situationally. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that you would have a film with this in it. Like, that's yeah, what's, yeah. It, it's, like, it wouldn't be funny if your friend made the same type of joke right right but in this context it's funny it's just perfect yeah like if i did um, it it would not be funny like i would probably no. get attacked <laughs> attacked yeah yeah Di by killed. you yeah with your with your very buff swimmers shoulders right you right these are not shoulder even, me in the this face this is just a tight shirt this mm -hmm. is my new merch I, I shouldn't say that this is my new merch and I, it actually fits very well it's just a little slim um Oh yeah, you it, had, says, it says Carson. I didn't even notice Carson. That. It's like kind of splattered. Yeah, it's embroidered. Did you make the splatter? I did. I just like scribbled in uh, Illustrator and nice. Yeah, but anyway, um, I yeah, I love the alien thing. What did you think of like? Because I feel like this film really goes off the rails in the last like twenty minutes. Not to, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously spoiler. If you guys haven't seen it, I would just skip to the Q and A. But, um. And what do you think of the ending of this movie? Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of uh, managed chaos. Yeah. <laughs> to where it's like chaos, but you're seeing all these individual moments within the chaos where uh -huh. each thing by itself is not that chaotic, but it's right. just like, yeah. you know, as a summation, there's a swarm of things happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it that might was, not have made any sense, whatever. I no, just it did. It did, because that's like how the ending of this movie feels is like really chaotic and and kind of i don't know i was like i was lost a little bit but i, I didn't i was like in it like i still really liked it um even if i like didn't understand what yeah. was really happening i think that's like what's actually that is what's happening is that like yeah. it just, what it what is and isn't real just kind of gets like lost on the characters and yeah and y you know what i i think part of what makes wes anderson chaos mm -hmm. unique yeah is all the characters in all his films are generally super low energy yeah so like yeah. chaotic things involving low energy people it's just like such a right. bizarre juxtapositioning yeah i noticed that with um royal tenenbaums and french dispatch is like when he part of like what makes his stuff so interesting is that it's not like he like stays on this like perfectly symmetrical orderly yeah. thing the entire time it's like his movies are very chaotic and like when it like when that breaks it's just like it's so exciting and, yeah. and 
Ooh, yeah. I just thought I kind of had another thought about this. Yeah. A lot of his chaos doesn't involve chaotic camera movements. Yeah. Yeah. It's like chaos happening just... within a static frame, which is like yeah. what makes it funnier. Or like or like a panning frame or something. Right. It's not but it's not like Dutch angles. Yeah. I, I I'm Someone should punch me for saying Dutch angles. <laughs> no. Well, don't they usually or like literally do a Dutch angle in the end of this movie when they're like all the like theater students and it's like it like gets like they might weird. Yeah. Recall. Um, that's the same reason why like the can't like him like taking the picture of the alien is like works so well is because it's like it's such like a tense like perfectly like straight quiet moment and then it like he breaks it by just like taking a picture and that's it's just like so funny <laughs> in that moment i don't know he just has like a, a lot of control and i think this movie's like a really good example of that um like i don't know where everybody's saying this but like and i i felt this way after the french dispatch i'm like i don't know where he can go from here and especially after this movie i'm like what do you do now <laughs> and i guess he's just like making short films for netflix is what i heard of like roll doll movies which is I guess exciting, but I'm like, yeah, this is like, <laughs> it seems like he's just pushing his style as far as it can go, and this is like a really, it feels like it hit its peak in this movie, but yeah, I, I, I loved this movie. It's, I, that's the other thing is like, I can't really like stop thinking about it, which I think is always yeah, the quality the, of a good movie. The color palette is mm -hmm. incredible. It, it's it amazing. Somehow creates this nostalgia for like the concept of you know whatever like 50s 60s uh like you know american desert yeah 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 it's it's so like the pretty. teal sky <laughs> yeah it looks like my letterbox profile uh <laughs> yeah i guess yeah um no it's so pretty the music is good I mean, all of it is just very like stylish and and nice to look at. Even like the black and white kind stuff. Like I thought you. he. Hey, come on. <laughs> I I thought the um... comment with uh, your handsome Karsten, <laughs> if you agree. You can have no comments that say that. Um, I did you like Brian Cranston in this movie? Uh okay i have an issue a little that was actually my least yeah. favorite part of the film now that you bring yeah. this up that's kind of what i i've heard some yeah. people say yeah so my issue is that brian cranston is like i can't see him for me it's like he's like such a bizarre actor because i can only see him as brian cranston because he's so <laughs> like specific and yeah. he's in a role where you shouldn't be specific mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like his yeah. role was just as this presenter where yeah. I shouldn't be thinking, oh, I'm watching Brian Cranston speak right now. Yeah, yeah. I thought the like the best he was used was when he showed up in the play, and he's like, oh, am I not in this? And I like that's usually not something that I find that funny, but for some reason that got to me. <laughs> but yeah, I thought his like his just his delivery felt not in the same universe as this movie like he was doing like a twilight zone thing that i'm like i don't know I, just, I know that it's this is like a tv program or that's like what it's like supposed to but i was like i don't it wasn't it wasn't working all the time for me uh, but yeah, yeah who do you think uh he should have cast <laughs> uh owen wilson he was I don't think Owen Wilson was in this and I thought he would yeah. have been a funny host <laughs> cuz that's kind yeah. of what he is in the French Dispatch in a way he's like the bike guy and he like it's a completely pointless part of that movie but is also my favorite part um yeah or Yeah Luke that is Wilson. or Luke Wilson yeah what is he up to I feel like he hasn't been in anything um yeah that's I don't know i i i really liked this movie i that i really do have like very few flaws with it because any flaws i had i'm like but i i would say i agree brian cranston might be like one of my main <laughs> things but i think i just like want to watch it again to see like what i missed because i don't even feel like i got a full grasp of everything this film was presenting to me uh mm -hmm. so yeah any uh any closing thoughts 
our other well, thoughts. This is a budget of twenty five million. Yeah. Yeah. It's already made more than that. It has? Yeah. Wait, let me see the are you on the box office mojo? I was just on Wiki. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um it's not making Spider or I mean Super Mario Bros. money. I'll say that much. But not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Wes um, Anderson directed a Super Mario Brothers live action film. Yeah. <laughs> that would be If he did like it would be similar to Super Mario Brothers 2, like the really weird one on the NES. Right. And they never talk about it again. Um I'm looking at the box office right now. I did not know Elemental was doing as well as it is. I thought it was a bomb, but it's actually not Didn't really you hate bad, that bad. film? I didn't like it, no. I thought it was... Yeah, I actually thought it was really bad. <laughs> yeah, didn't you uh, say it was, uh, like, the, the sewage, worst thing? It was gar- yeah. Yeah, you said it was... You said it, you thought it was carcinogenic. Yes, I did say that about the new Pixar movie, yeah. Elemental. <laughs> um, this has made... This yeah, is the element that it was was lead <laughs> because it sunk. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's And it stunk. Um, and it stunk. It was like sulfur yeah. out, uh, in lead. In lead. I'm going to give this one four and a half out of five. That's what I was giving it. Same page. What are we thinking time of day? This is an interesting mm. one for time of day because I feel I, like this is a great film to watch on a summer, mm. which it re- was released in. Um, yeah. And I'm going to say like Saturday afternoon. That's a yeah 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 wow that's great Saturday like afternoon maybe you just like like two three p.m. like after uh-huh. lunch do that you get out it's still a nice long summer day it's still bright out yeah I can think about it yeah that was a uh, a steroid city by Wes Anderson <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's actually a biopic about Fred Astaire yeah <laughs> a steroid city or it's a Hulk Hogan biopic. Where I will at what where would this like rank on your list? Yeah, I think movies? it's gonna be like in the middle. Yeah, yeah. I haven't gotten like an actual list, but for me, it's still Life Aquatic, mm-hmm. Darjeeling Limited. Yeah, and then it's gonna be somewhere in that like middle section. Yep. yep. I recently watched the Darjeeling Limited again, and it's it's a good movie. It's a really sweet movie. Yeah. Um, I just also love like travel films yeah yeah made me want to go to india um yeah i'll anyway, go with you you'll go with me to india yeah let's do it <laughs> next episode we're in yeah. India. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we made it to india um okay let's get into some questions yeah uh, from the subreddit which I, I I mean haven't been on there in a very long time. Yeah, yeah. People sorry are talking still People. in there. Um which surprised someone someone was like looking through my old drive and found some pandemic era classics and it says Karst Stamps, America's favorite welding podcast. Um and it's just stamps with our faces on it. Uh yeah. Use code Karston for your first month free. I don't remember this being posted, but that's a or what that is no. referring to? Why that even? I have no idea. <laughs> There's also Jeff a site, and it's just you photoshopped on all the parasite characters. And then there's Jeffrey Borslow pack cast. A lot yeah, of gems. That, I could still do that. You never know. You you. I mean, you really could. Um, let's see. I feel like packing stuff would really take off on like TikTok. I feel like that's a Short it does it seems content. like it's a much better short form because you just like have yeah. the all the layout of the stuff and then you like do like a quick like wes anderson shot of all the stuff you're including yeah. where it's like the one mm-hmm. toiletry kit oh, yeah. you should okay you know how like tiktoks like are like loops you know like yeah. that's like you should start every tiktok with like from the the phone is in the uh the suitcase and you open it up so it's like black and then you open it up and then you like <laughs> take it out and start and then at the end you pack the phone and close the suitcase so it's like you open and it up and like, then you close. Uh, yeah yeah in the comment i'll be like but don't actually pack your phone this way. yeah that'll confuse you and yeah, leave the camera it's, running it's a bad packing tip yeah tip <laughs> uh anyway these questions come from the carscast subreddit r slash carscast um in this first one 
comes from Educational Bowl 186. I forget if we... I mean, these are so old that I don't even remember if we did these. <laughs> but this one is least favorite cuss word. Did we do this one? I don't remember no, doing this. No, but also, like, least favorite cuss word? I mean, I don't, like... There's some obvious ones that I, you know, we don't yeah, want to. This is a terrible <laughs> there's question. Some, there's some. Ter- I know. <laughs> Why did I ask this one? <laughs> because I was like, well, you know, damn. I like damn. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's your least favorite one? You just, it's like, yeah, the the really bad ones. The really bad ones that you can't say. Those yeah. are pretty. Those are, all right. Different question. This one comes from. Um, Tom Wamsgan's whore and its favorite and least favorite Valentine's Day memory. It was supposed to ask this during February, but I forgot. And now we're going to answer it. We didn't answer it. In July. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I never have been like a big Valentine's Day neither aficionado. Have I. No, neither uh, have I. Yeah, so I don't really have a good answer for this. Like in. in I, I liked it a lot in elementary school because we'd like make boxes and then like. Were you like candy. a really hot kid? You got all the valentines. <laughs> no, no, I was a nice kid, so they would give them to me. Uh, yeah, that's. But that was a, that was a good memory. I don't like. Yeah, I don't go crazy for Valentine's Day. I'm more like if it's like a romantic thing. Me and my girlfriend, we usually do something special for, like, our anniversary. But Valentine's Day, it always, like, fit, there's a lot of pressure to it, you know, and that's – I don't like mm-hmm. that. Um, But, yeah. I, These are – honestly, this is our worst <laughs> question-answering performance of the, all time. The podcast was going so well up until this part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just – let me – I'm going to hop onto the Discord because um, – Yeah. Yeah, the the – I, that's kind of where we've been going for questions anyway. Uh, yeah, the people on Discord are way smarter than the people on the, the server. Now, I wouldn't say the CarsCast server cast. Q&A. Um, uh, oh, yeah, here's one from Isaac. Um, question for Carson and Jeff. This was from May 15th. When at TIFF or in Canada in general, what's your go-to Tim Hortons order? I usually just get the coffee from there. I, I don't really remember... I, I have gotten food there, and I thought it was, like, solid. I think I got, like, a yeah. croissant. Yeah. Um, but the co- I do like Tim Hortons coffee. It, it's good. Um, a lot of Canadians were upset because they think it used to be better before it changed ownership. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, I, I mean, I, I'm, like, a cold brew guy, especially when, you know, at TIFF, it's it's hot it's in yeah. September, early September. Mm-hmm. Waiting in a line. Yeah, so I, I usually go with like some kind of cold brew, maybe maybe caramel. Definitely. Yeah, I I um it's like cold brew season right now. Like I'll I'll have cold brews all summer. It's weird when I have like a hot coffee in the summer. Doesn't yeah. doesn't land well. Yeah, when um, I uh was with uh you and Jared in Chicago it was cold and I still got a cold brew. That's I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I still haven't drank those beers by the way. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I didn't face. expect you to. Yeah, I'm. I really, I do not want to get rid of them because they're such a great thing to own. Yeah, like I, I don't think I'll ever get rid of them, but I'm, I'm terrified to drink it. Uh, Feel free to get rid of them, but if you do, maybe just like take a couple like photos of you with them before you do. What but I, you what have I my permission do, to get rid of them. I might like you want empty to. them, but keep one can, like keep an empty can, and and like put that because yeah. I really. When else am I gonna have a Karsten beer? You know, yeah. it's it's a very fun thing to to have. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't want to like make you feel burdened with this gift. Yeah, no, no, it's not a burden at all. It's it's a fun thing to show people when they come over now. Um, you, that'd be funny though, if you give it to someone to drink. You're like, hey, you want a Karsten? Yeah, <laughs> and then it's the worst beer they've ever had. Um, I mean, it's not like. It's not bad for you. You can still, yeah. It just tastes bad, I think. Um, yeah, because it's expired. Just to be clear, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. anyone listening, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> okay, this one's from Black Panther Dies, and I forget if we answered this one, but it's can either of you beatbox? No, I can sort of. 
Oh, do it. You have to. Neds. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess you... I guess you can, but yeah. I don't know if you should. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this last one comes from Ashamed Natural. Honestly, that was better better than I would do. <laughs> um, Ashamed Natural, 3333. And it's for Karsten. Would you rather never watch a movie ever again or never make a movie ever again? You'd be able to watch your own movies for editing and such. I feel like this applies to you as well. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's it's definitely never make a movie again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I enjoy watching movies a lot more. Yeah. Than I enjoy. I actually, well, making them are, is really fun, but I don't do that that often. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you watch movies all the. Time. Yeah, I that's really like, also, wanted that's how to you see make money. Wait, yeah, but that's is making a thing. YouTube video making a movie. That's true. Some would say yes, but I don't think so. But then how how could you even if you decided to make them? Right. Right. How, what would you make them about? Exactly. Because you can't see any movies. You'd have to just pretend? Yeah. I would I would still watch movies is the answer to this, yeah. I was thinking, because my I'm making my succession video, which mm -hmm. has turned into, it ended up being, I, the audio recording is 40 minutes, which is my longest video ever. But I thought for a second, I was like, what if this ends up being like an hour and a half? Then that's like a documentary, but yeah. it's not. <laughs> but I know a lot of YouTube videos that are like an hour and a half, and I'm like, would they count that as a documentary? Because it's technically like a feature length film. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just crazy. I that's yeah. Um. Anyway, I I asked people if they had questions in the Discord, and and no one has has answered yet. But someone is typing, so I'll. I'll oh, someone's typing. Yeah, I'm gonna Lamar Get is in. typing. I'm gonna wait for this uh, under the. I don't know what I was um, going to say there. <laughs> Under the like, what's something when something's about to close? Like, I don't know what. Oh, under the wire. Under the. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That see that Look, we're such a good team. We're just like Lamar this. stopped typing. <laughs> so we're gonna head into the wrap. Well, I guess up. we're gonna end the podcast. Um, um, <laughs> gonna... Always great talking to my good buddy yeah. Kirsten Runquist next movie we actually do know and we're gonna I, am, I mean if you're down i'm down I'll try to do this within a week and yeah. get back on this schedule here because here's the thing is there there are like here the, the thing is when we were doing like once a month there weren't a ton of movies coming out to even talk about but yeah. we're in like the summer and and there's a kind of a glut we have like barbie coming up and oppenheimer yeah, we gotta talk about and, barbie Ob yeah, the I know. Teenage Mutant when I was Ninja Turtles. Previews, when I was watching previews of Asteroid City, I was like, I want to see all these films. I know. it's The movies are back. But, oh, so next movie, uh, I think we're going to talk about the new Indiana Jones. Um, so check it out. Cause check we'll it probably, out. I know we're going we're gonna to be spoiling it because uh, there's yeah. a th big thing I want to talk about. But, Which yeah. I haven't seen it, so. Yeah. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny in theaters now um and next we like to read a review because even if we have not recorded an episode in so long uh we I, there's got to be someone who's leaving their thoughts on the podcast here um i have to know this one yeah and there are oh geez there's actually a lot this one comes from uh, polaris.mars and the subject line is my dog alfie says hi hello alfie five stars and it reads i'm usually not a big podcast person but i've been listening to this while i walk my dog around my neighborhood it's been super great we get so many reviews about like this people love listening to this while they walk their dogs it's so funny yeah. it's like uh, a great podcast to only half pay attention to right and it's not like you're walking your dog for an hour so it's like you kind of just tune in and then you turn it off uh, the, play it at four times speed the only bad thing about listening to this while i'm outside is sometimes i just end up laughing because of the podcast in front of someone's house or after i pass someone on the walk pa walk paths which makes me seem super weird 
10 out of 10 podcast. My dog loves it too. That's very sweet. Thank you, Polaris. From the USA also. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, and lastly, even though <laughs> it's been a while, and I think I paused it for inactivity reasons, uh, we'd like to thank the patrons um, for supporting us. Now that, like, again, like, now that now that I'm, like, kind of... I won't be on vacation, and, like, I've settled into my schedule. Suck off is over. My schedule's free. I think it's... I'll be able to put a little bit more attention into the Patreon. Um, but we just want to say thank you to... Hashtag Jeffrey Borslow for Space Jam... Oh, wait. I need to... These are, these are everybody ever. I need to change it to active. <laughs> um... Yeah, we just gained like 10,000 patrons I <laughs> by not recording. Thank you, Anson Contreras, Camilla, Coop, David Borslow, David Sir, Hout Vitesse, Jared Armstrong, Jaden Alexander, John Van Hout. Let's change the Google search results for PTA. Levin, what should I change this to? Martin Def, Mary Lee Borslow, Monroe Page, Pasta Noodle, Queen of Staten Island, Riley Ost, Ryan M., Sam Farr, Stella Perry, Super Cali, Fragilistic X, Bialidocia, Smitty Werbin, Jagerman Jensen, Wes Kinley, Wiley Todd, and Zoe Hernandez McDonald. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, I think that's going to do. But, Jeff, I hope to see you next week. Um, actually, I hope to see you this week. Like, maybe even tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? I mean, totally. You're free to stop by. Yeah. Off. If not tomorrow, then on Saturday. Like, well, I'll be seeing you. Hopefully, it's not going to rain. Do we know the weather? That I have not checked. I, I didn't. I was going to take that into consideration. But. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Saturday, it does say it's going to rain, but hopefully not when we're going to do it. We'll look at um, we'll it. Thanks for listening, everybody. And as always, uh, catch you Jeff, on the flip side. Catch you on the flip side. Flip side.